kingship is not for wealth number two is not for status number three is not for the acquisition of things or affluence a pastor came to me the other day and he said uh papa i came for counsel i said what is the counseling for he said papa i don't know why i'm not successful and it is not working a pastor talking like that so i asked him are you a businessman or a politician he said no i'm a man of god i said what is not working i said i don't understand because what you're speaking is strange to my ears what do you mean by it is not working do you mean that the word of god is not working he said no what i mean is that i am not successful in ministry i say what is the yardstick what yardstick are you using to measure it he was quiet because he knew i was getting at at something important i said i know your problem you think making it in ministry is car escort car pilot car and then a big jeep in between a big house and church with crowd making it i said that's wrong that's not the way ministerial success is measured what is the way ministerial success is measured a minister who is successful is a laborer in word and doctrine finish once you teach the word and you're sound in your teaching you're a successful minister it's not measured by things if success in ministry is measured by crowd what about across the river where there are fishermen that must be pastored and in the whole village there are only 50 and a pastor has to live there and pastor them forever so that means that man's church even if the whole village join his church they can never be more than 50 is he not a success if he, if he goes to that village and he has 30 members out of 50 his church is bigger than churches in cities if a city has a church of over 14 million people and he has 10,000 members he is not as successful as that man pastoring in a city of 50 30 members so we don't measure ministerial success by crowd we don't measure ministerial success by car influence and affluence we are not businessmen and we are not politicians ministerial success is measured by soundness in doctrine and when you start teaching people sound doctrine even if they are four and they grow in the knowledge of christ you're successful that's why jesus said his church is where two are as the church of jesus that's the church of jesus two or three gathered in my name i'm there that's the church of jesus but you know we human beings we we have brought worldliness into the church so we use the yardstick that unbelievers use to measure success we brought it into the house of god which is why some young pastors are under pressure and some of them go to native doctors to collect things and use it to be pulling crowd out of a church somewhere where the pastor buried something under the altar and the native doctor that gave him the, the charm was waiting for returns because the, he was supposed to be making monthly returns bringing monies and all that and he defaulted for three months so the native doctor wore his native doctor clothes on a sunday morning i'm telling you a true story a friend of mine <laughs> you know in ghana one of my friends in ghana a big bishop told me this story and he told me he saw it himself it's not that they told him he said the baba came on a sunday morning the church was packed and all kinds of drama was happening he came with his regalia, carried his calabash with that thing. I don't know that thing. You know that thing that is uh, like the, the tail of a of uh, ox tail. He uh, just brought it and came and stood in front of the church and told the ushers, come here. Go and tell your pastor I'm calling him. He said, what? He said, if you don't go, I'll go and bring him. He's my boy. <laughs> your boy? Yes, he's my boy. If you don't bring him, I'll go in and meet him. So one of them said, before there's embarrassment, let's tell pastor. So they came and told the pastor. They said, one baba outside. It's your father in the Lord. <laughs> that you have not been bringing returns. So he has come to collect his thing. So the pastor came out and went and met him. And started begging, Baba, please, now, Baba, please, don't embarrass me. And all the protocol and ushers were watching. Please, Baba, don't embarrass me. He said, no, 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 no. The gods are angry. The gods are angry. You have not made returns for you. They told me to come and carry our thing. I'm going in to carry it now. Church is on. People are gathered. He entered the church, opened the altar, carried this thing in people's presence and left. Then the bishop said to me, Dr. Damira, can you believe? The following Sunday, this, this, this mumu people still came back. I told him, Bishop, it's spell. When they cast spell on them, they, beho they behave mumuish. They can't think straight. It's like remote control. He said, they still gathered. Of course, within the week, uh, son in the Lord must have gone to father in the Lord to go and settle. People are desperate because they have told them ministerial success is car and house. Let me be honest. Listen to me, every one of you. When I came into ministry, pastors were not anything to talk about. It, to even marry, if anybody agreed to give you their daughter, is the grace of God. Because when I joined ministry, the best of pastors were using bicycles. Most were trekking. There were not many pastors that had car. So 
I didn't come into ministry for money and fame and popularity. I came into ministry with a raw passion to teach people the word of God and help people. That's all that brought me to ministry. That's all. And I didn't join ministry at old age. I entered ministry as a young boy with all my potentials to be as successful as anybody in the secular. But I chose to consecrate that for ministry. That's why when I see the truth of the gospel, it doesn't take me a day to make my U-turn. Because I'm not in this thing for anything ulterior. I'm in this thing for the truth of it. It's not about houses and cars. What makes a true minister is a teacher of the word of God. If you're catching, shout, I hear you. So you don't respect a man of God because of his cars. You respect him because of what is coming out of his mouth. You check his doctrinal weight. That's what determines respect. It's not the crowd. It's not the houses and the cars. Those are not the things that make ministry. Does he have more houses than Elon Musk? Have you heard of Elon Musk? They are going to, the, to, to Mars to go and build a planet. They are moving. They said this earth. Too many poor people everywhere. They, the rich, they want to change address where only people like them can live. And it's no more on earth. It's at Mars. I'm not joking. When people have too much money and don't know God, they want to go to heaven and meet God. Yes, they want to go to Mars. Because it's earth. Too many poor people everywhere. Let's go to Mars. Where we'll only see people like us. So if success in ministry is by wealth, no pastor is successful. Because no pastor is as rich as these guys I'm calling their names. Is it Zuckerberg? Those guys are controlling nations. They're controlling nations. World economies. They call them the big tech. Even American government is crying in their hands. They are crying in the hands of these big tech guys. Twitter, Facebook. They are crying because those guys are too rich. They are so rich that they can, they can tamper with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the configuration of your nation. They can determine what happens to you, to your Nigerian election. They can tamper with anywhere. Big tech, yet these guys don't care about Christ. They are not interested in Christ. So if ministerial success is money and cars and houses, let me tell you, the most carnal man on earth is a man that respects a man of God because of his wristwatch and his suit and his car. You are as carnal as carnality can be. Real spirituality is to respect men that labor. Bible says, they that labor in word and doctrine deserve double honor. Then he say, esteem them highly for their work's sake. Not for their car sake. That's why preachers feel when you just have big cars. You know, big cars. And you have bodyguards. You have escort and pilot cars. Where you enter everywhere. As you're coming out, your protocol, they're pushing everybody down. Pushing everybody down. So that the man of God can come out. The man of God. And then you see him feeling cool. As they're pushing people down. The same people you're supposed to disciple and build up. They're pushing them down. And you're happy if it was in the days of paul when paul will enter a place and people are kneeling down to greet him he kneels up says stand up we are not gods we are your brothers my man i went to zimbabwe you remember as soon as we arrived zimbabwe they took us from the airport to the church service was holding like this as we arrived in front of the church everybody knelt down i asked mama what is that mama said let's be watching everybody protocol ushers everybody's on their knees so I'm not comfortable with it. I don't, I don't understand this kind of thing. We are not slave masters. Anyway, I'm watching. As we approach the front of the church door like this, the whole church saw my man I. Everybody knelt down. I told the pastor, no, no, I'm not used to this. What's this? He said, no, that's how we do it here. When they see a man of God, they must kneel down. Ah. No, tell them to stand up. This man of God can only operate if they can stand up. If they are not standing up, having done all to stand. So if they cannot stand, we can't teach them. But you know, some men of God will feel cool. Kneel down well, kneel down well, kneel down well. <laughs> kneel down well, my son, kneel down well. You are kneeling down until your body is shaking because you are tired. The man is still telling you, kneel down, my son. Kneel what? Kneel what? That's not honor. That's not honor. Because the man can kneel down and be abusing you. Idiot. Nonsense. She is punk, punky. <laughs> Real honor is from the heart. And it is honor for the word. You didn't hear what I said. Real honor is from the heart and it is honor for what? The word. You're honoring the man because of the word that is coming out of him to shape your life. Ah, okay, if you, if you are flabbergasted by my car, how does my car add value to your spirituality? How does the car I drive add anointing to you? Why are you shaking that a man of God came with a limousine? Why? 
It's all this prosperity gospel that brought all that nonsense. And it tampered with priority. So that the church people, God's people, don't know what to honor men of God for anymore. So they honor us as if they're honoring politicians. We are not politicians. And that's why some pastors, because this kind of thing has entered, they can't differentiate their calling from politics. So they become political pastors. They go around politicians seeing visions when they should be in church building disciples they go around seeing all kinds of visions all kinds of visions meanwhile the bible said god has set those gifts in the church not outside there the gifts of ministry are not for politicians they are for the church god has set some in the church first apostles secondly prophets prophets are not to be prophesying on the streets they are to be inside the church because those are gifts for body ministry they are gifts to build the body of christ i'm not joking i'm very serious i have more than enough scriptures to establish what i just said in bible times even when jesus had not come prophets don't go to to to, to politicians politicians come to prophets and if you read well the prophets were always warning them yeah don't say the lord they warn them you have to behave right you have to treat the people right I mean, imagine Samuel came to the house of this king and told him God has rejected you and as he's leaving the man tore his cloth he said your kingdom shall be torn in two Bible prophets did not have time for all these uh, psychophancy that was even before Jesus came after Jesus came a new order of prophets came and this new order of prophets are in the church this new order of apostles are in the church why he said he that descended is he that ascended and when he ascended upon high he gave gifts to men why for the perfecting of not for the perfecting of politicians i have nothing against politicians i love them and a lot of them are here a lot of them are inside this church you know i love all of you and i pray for you i wish you well and i want you to be the best i even want some of you to be president and being the president because if you do it the gospel will move well so i have nothing against that but it is not what a man of god giving up his entire ministry and life for. and i'm speaking like this because i know many men of god are listening to me right now that nonsense must stop Paul say i'm magnifying my office politicians will come and go how many years do they stay i will give up my ministry for a four-year office at most eight before they came i've been here when they will leave i'll still be here what's the matter what's the matter before any political office comes in i'm here M many of you don't know that i have been in this state from 89 i've been here for from 89 89 was when i came to Akwaibon, and when i came i came with fire and the fire is still burning many things happen in Akwaibon. we prophesied it but surprise you are here you know what i'm talking we call the airport we call all these developments you're seeing we call them when the, it was bush bush everywhere so calling them and seeing them it gives us joy to see that what we call has come to pass and we are calling more things that's not enough for me to subject my entire ministerial office to a politician no never i love them and i bless them but i know what i have been called to do am i teaching good